Welcome back from the break. You're still watching Life Stories. Thank you for being a part of the show. We continue with Aisha Nabukeda's story. Aisha's memories of her nightmare are still vivid and the scars are clearly seen. But beyond the known, she's a strong girl. Her can't die spirit fights on. And tonight on Life Stories, we celebrate this young warrior. Aisha, what did you lose? Were you able to go back to school? Did, because you, you said you're in pieces and they are good, but were yeah. you able to sit the exams? No, that two thousand and three, and never went to school because I spent um, two thousand. I uh, like two years in the hospital, and then that's when I went to see parents for my P uh, P seven, mm. two thousand eight. Mm. Then I joined high school, mm. Saint Lawrence, because mm. uh, Mister um, Mchibi Lawrence had given me a scholarship up to. From up to campus. Mm. So, Aisha, what are your dreams for the future? What do you want to be in the future? Uh, I want to be a doctor. Mm. Yeah, to help, uh, to help people, to, as in, to, especially those who, uh, who get burnt. Mm. And, yeah, that's my dream. Mm. Aisha, you still look very sad. And you still look like you have so many reservations. Um, what makes you sad? Hmm? But I Why are you sad? I'm not sad. Mm. I'm okay. You're okay. okay. Yeah. Mm. Somehow in life, when you are hit rock bottom, the only way is up. Aisha, a girl from a broken family, is now living a happy life with her guardian, Mr. Frank Kashumba, and his family. They love her unconditionally. She is healthy, going to school, and is a top performer. I want to be well. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, you are very majestic. Mama, you said you want to be a car. You're watching Life Stories. Joining us is Mr. Frank Dashuba. We are in his office here on 6th Street, industrial area. He's the guardian to Ashina Okera, and he's Frank. How are you today? Good. How have you been? Mm. How is this place? Fighting on. So when did you meet Aisha Nabukeda? I first met Aisha Nabukeda in 2006. I think it was August. I met Aisha Nabukeda in Masaka district. Uh, and how did you meet her? Actually, we had, we had gone to Masaka my dad had problems to do with the land. So court had summoned my dad to go to court to Masaka. So as a family, we decided to go to, to Masaka court and see what was really happening. That's the day I met Aisha. Basically, it wasn't arranged for. But the, the state in which Aisha was in, in 2006, was a shocking story. A young girl who was meant to be in a hospital and intensive care unit, she was in court with her mom seeking courtes guidance so that she can get treatment. Wasn't it a custody battle? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Because I learned that day that uh, her mom had gone to court to secure a, an order so that Aisha, Aisha Nabukera's dad pays hospital bills and the rest. What I did, it was a very disturbing day in my life because I would not think there are such people in this country of Uganda for ours. So I met the magistrate by then, it was called Mr. Batema. And I told him that I'm willing to give a helping hand to this young girl. And he told me that as long as the parents do, do agree, we have no problem with it. And he told me that they had, summoned, they had summoned Aisha's father to come to court. Luckily enough, he showed up. And when I told him what I'm intending to do, he said, Allah Akbar. In, in, in Arab it means God is great. So he said that he, as long as you are willing to give a helping hand to my daughter, you are free. So that day we drove from Masaka to Kampala. I remember we took Nabukera to Mulago Hospital. The following day, early in the morning, I had to go to, to Mulago to see what is happening. Then Nabukera expected to be in the intensive care unit. She was in the gardens of Mulago Hospital, basically in the trees. And I remember asking her that, why are you here? She, that she was 
her mom told me that they were told to go back after four months. To me, I'm not a doctor, but ordinarily, the, what the body impression that I got from Nabukera because the whole chest was burnt. It was full of wounds. But Mulago hospital authorities told her to go back after four months. So I, I thought that uh, the Mulago I admired so much was not doing the right thing. So what I did, I picked my phone, called a number of friends, some of them are doctors, and they told me there is a, a children's home called Katarima Children's Home that they can give a helping hand. Immediately we drove to Katarima where she started getting treatment. Let me tell you, between 2006 and 2009, all offices that matter in Uganda, I went there to secure Nabukera's justice. Unfortunately, everywhere I would go, police would block me. And I'm wondering even today why police would fight Nabukera to get her justice. But was there a trial to hear the case of Nabukera accusing her stepmother? Let me tell you, in Uganda, when you're poor and unconnected, you want to get justice. In Uganda, when you're poor and unconnected, you forget about justice. I met the DPP, Mr. Butera himself, and he told me, yes, the truth of the matter, this girl was burnt, but the evidence I need on this file to prostitute this woman is lacking. So there was no way the DPP would take that file to court because all the evidence he needed to take to court, police left it out. Now we gave up with justice. We decided that the best present we can give this young girl is to make sure that she attains her skin and take her back to school. She sat for her P7, she got a, a second grade. Now she sat for her, for her senior four. You are getting me? So meaning the, about her justice, who burnt in Abukera, it's history. Police mismanaged this case, period. I told them, if you think this was an ordinary cloth that, that was filled with petrol, let me give you an example. Do you know what I did? I went to, to Chibuye, bought petrol, bought paraffin, and an ordinary dress. Went to, to the Tablik's mosque in, in, uh, in uh, Nakasero. There are those statues. I bought three clothes. Dressed them. One filled with, with three clothes. One filled with petrol, another one paraffin, another one with an ordinary dress. At home, we are doing experiments. Lit the cabinet. The one with the petrol, it took it 37 seconds, the dress was done with the fire. The one with the paraffin, it took it two hours. An ordinary dress, it took us more than a, a month. Meaning that the dress Nabukera was dressed that day, it was not an ordinary dress. It was soaked with the petrol. But police never looked into that because they are not qualified. That's very unfortunate. And around that period when uh, you're helping Nabukera and uh, you're doing ABCD mm. in the hospital. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. trying to do this and that with the parents. Mm. There was a small, I don't know if it was small, but there was a, an uprising about money issues. Yes, yes. To do with you. Yeah. Was this just irresponsible information? Uh, th that's a nice one, and you've made my day. You know Ugandans spend a lot of their time talking of things they don't know than concentrating on the things that matter in their lives. The first day I met Nabukera in Masaka, that was in 2006. I was driving a Mercedes car with my young girl, Sheila. I can tell you, we received over 66 million in pledges, in pledges, and I want you to quote me. Out of the 66 million in pledges, we got only 30 million in cash, which we've been using from 2006 up to today. And you won't believe this, Justina. I lived with Nabukera for over a year, using my own resources from my own family. We could share a meal with Nabukera, the public world. We don't even know there's a young girl holding Nabukera. So the public came in after a year. Then after coming in a year, they started saying Gashumba's boat, buildings in Kampala using Nabukera's funds, Gashumba's boat, and Mercedes Benz. But we've lived... Uh, uh, so you mean um, mm. Nabukera's issue got national and international attention after a year? Yes! I remember taking Nabukera to Katarima, my own driver, uh, what, by then he was called Swaib. He would drive to Nabukera in that same car to Katarima every day to do that dressing. I'm bitter with those people because they are stopping future guardians. They are stopping other people who can give a helping hand. That's why you won't believe it. 
Nabukera, she has just completed her senior four. No one talks about Nabukera. No one talks about Nabukera. But if something funny happened tomorrow, all media houses are telling me. So we need a new culture in, in the media where you guys report on the positiveness. That's why I have to thank you and TV. So today, what is your relationship with Nabukera's parents? I mean, both of them. Actually, the relationship is excellent now. Actually, last year, we visited Nabukera, me and him at school at St. Lawrence. And when, when he does pass by Kampala, he comes to my office here, we, we talk like men. Because I told him that what we have to do now is to concentrate on, on Nabukera's future, not why you se you're separated with Naka and Sophia. So the relationship between Aisha's dad is excellent. The relationship between her mother and me, it's good. So Mr. Gashumba, does... Aisha visit her parents, you know, and how often does this happen? St. Lawrence, it's a boarding school whereby parents are allowed to go there during the visiting days. And there's an, an understanding between me and Nabukera's mom. First term holiday, she's home in Gaba. Second term holiday, she's home in Gaba. Third term, she spends the third term holiday with her mom. So basically, there is no restrictions that are we have to get a military clearance for Nabukera to move. So anytime she feels like moving to her parents, it's normal life. If she wants to come home, she has her bedroom at home. If she wants to be home, she stays home. Does she go to see her father? I will confess this. Apart from the day her father visited her at St. Lawrence, I don't recall Nabukera ever going to Masaka to visit her father. Her visiting her dad, I always encourage her to visit her father. But she's always reluctant. And what do you expect me to do if she's not willing to go and visit her dad? She's understandably reluctant. Yes, and again, again, you should even ask the, the dad. St. Lawrence is along Masaka Road. Nabukera's dad lives in Masaka. I don't think he can even take two weeks without coming to Kampala. Why, why doesn't he pass by and say hello to her daughter? So, what is Nabukera's health? You know, what is her health condition right now? Does she still see doctors? Does she...? No, Nabukera, look, she had three operations in Uganda. By 2006, Nabukera would not write. She could not wash her clothes. She could not even carry jerry can. Those three operations that were done in Uganda, she can now write. She can wash her clothes. She can even carry jerry can. So health-wise, she's okay. So why did you choose to have Aisha stay at your place? Because this is not something we can take for granted. Yeah. Aisha has two parents. Okay? Yeah. Yes. So why did you choose to get her to stay at your place? Look at a young girl. She had to go to Katarima every day for dressing. They had no accommodation in Kampala. And we had an accommodation in Kampala. So we decided, let's live as a family. How do we thank God for what we are? We thank God by giving back to the needy. So it wasn't, there were no motives that let's keep Nabukera in my house. Let's keep Aisha's mom in my house, no. We wanted a place where she could live, and at the moment, no one would be willing to, to be with Nabukera for 30 minutes. Because if you stood next to Nabukera, you would not believe what was getting out of her because of the bands. And the other thing you should know, Nabukera did her primary at city parents. For the whole year, she was commuting from home. By the way, you won't believe it. 97% of Ugandans appreciated what we did. But something you know, a few negative forces are more powerful than the 97% who are quiet. Meaning the 3% who are talkative, they can spoil your image. What big lesson have you learned from this experience of your life? I want Nabukera to be a testimony in the future that don't, don't ever underestimate a group of committed people they can change. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you for taking care of Asha. Mm. Uh, what you're doing is something very good. Cool. We are proud of you. We hope you're proud of yourself too. Asha has improved a lot and is success registered beyond the words and the rumors and everything. And God bless you for that. Yeah, thank you. And uh, I have to thank NTV for the life stories. I believe it's changing people's lives. And for you parents, for you mothers who are outside there, don't mistreat children. Your, your, your son or your daughter, he or she is a candidate for stepmother. If you know you want your daughter to live a good life or your son, make sure that you treat children in the same way. Because at the end of the day, we don't know where we are heading. 
and for you men who are outside there, what makes you a man is not the ability to put on shoes and the trousers. What makes you a man is the ability to be supportive to your wife and your family. When Asha's body went into flames, little did she know she would become a ray of hope for abused children. Today, every school that composes a song on child abuse has her face in the video. Uh, you having gone through this experience, it's, it's not even just a certain point in your life, but it, it's almost half your life because it's affected a great part of your life. Um, what do you learn from this? Okay, uh, what I learned. Mm. I learned, uh, okay, not everyone was close to you, mm. maybe. Not, uh, not everyone close to you is your friend. Mm. And then that's when I realized, I don't know, people's hearts, uh, mm. you know, you can stay with that person, but when you don't know the inside part of her, you just see the... Mm. Hmm. Asha, what would you want to see? Uh, you know, you told me so many things that you were not satisfied with uh, in the way you were helped, either by police or by your parents. What would you want to see today? Is there anything that you thought was missing in the way your incident was handled? That every day of your life you wish that could be recovered or worked on? The, uh, um, the police, mm. you know, it's like they don't, okay, the only thing, if they, I mean, like, if you take a, a, maybe a crime there, they just say they're investigating, but they don't, they, they don't use action. They mm. just, like, investigation, that's the only thing. Mm. I just wish they, at least they, they, they show some action, then they work on such things because if they okay if they don't uh, they don't do uh, such things you know crimes are going to be coming up because they know the police can't do anything so a person will be able to do anything mm. he or she wants mm. Mm. yeah so you just wish they they can yeah the government um, and then to at least to even their parents themselves, let them listen to their kids instead of because you love someone, you love her so much, but you can't take care, take care of your kid and then you abandon someone because of the love you have for your wife. So, mm. yeah. Mm. That's what I wish. All right. Asha, I wish you all the best and okay. you stay well. God bless you. One day, a success story will be told, and Aisha Nabukeda will be the headline. This country as a whole decried what happened to Aisha, but today we celebrate how far Aisha has come. Imagine a world where children's rights were everyone's responsibility, including stepmothers. God bless the children all over the world. The controversies surrounding Aisha Nabukeda's case show that matters concerning children's well-being in society are a responsibility of every person and not the parents alone. I take this opportunity to thank stepmothers who take care of their stepchildren just like their own, who love them and treat them equally. But to those who mistreat children because you're a stepmother, God will judge you. Fathers, I call upon you to take a stand. In the event of a broken relationship, a broken home, or a broken marriage, please protect your children. The police and other authorities, we have tremendous optimism in our systems. Please don't let us down. In circumstances like Nabukeda's, all we need is justice. That was it on Life Stories today. I'm Justine, your host. Thank you for giving this show a slot in your day. Stay well, and remember, you can still catch the show on YouTube Give us your say on our Facebook and Twitter pages, that is NTV Life Stories. Mm -hmm.